So you join me here in Washington DC on Capitol Hill at the end of what was arguably the worst week of Trump's presidency and there's been a lot of competition, not least the previous week, uh, the one where he fired James Comey, head of the FBI, but this week uh, began with the um, disclosure that Trump had um, leaked secrets about ISIS operations from Israel originally to Foreign Minister Lavrov of Russia and Sergei Kislyak, the Russian notorious Russian ambassador. It, it then moved on on Tuesday to the news that, um, that Jim Comey had been pressured by Trump to drop the investigation against Mike Flynn, Trump's first subsequently fired national security advisor. Um, and then finally, the uh, shock announcement by Rod Rosenstein, the Deputy Attorney General, that he was appointing a special prosecutor to take up the investigation that Jim Comey uh, had been ejected from the week before. So a disastrous week for Trump. Speculation about impeachment now becoming really quite realistic. And I sat down to discuss that prospect with Vin Weber, a, a, a veteran Republican, um, was there in the 90s with Newt Gingrich, um, and is a, a big establishment Republican figure about town now. And I asked Finn, uh, what are the prospects that Trump's actually going to see out his first term? Clearly we're in the midst of a potential um, Watergate kind of crisis with the Trump administration. Do you share that view? Where do you think it's going to go from here? Well, it certainly is like the Watergate crisis in the early stages of Watergate. What we don't know and should not presume is that it's going to end the way that Watergate ended. I certainly hope that it does not. But there's no question at this stage we're seeing much of the same thing, the same sets of questions, of obstruction of justice, controversial firings of high-level people. Um, it's, it's not yet where Watergate is because we really don't know that anybody, the president particularly, has done anything wrong. But we've got investigations going on. Uh, they can go in any direction as they always have in the past. And it's very concerning because it's going to tie up the United States government. My guess is, at the end of it, President Trump survives all this. The big question in my mind is how much of his agenda and thus the Republican agenda is sacrificed to the distraction of these investigations. So you say he hasn't done anything wrong, but there's pretty good prima facie grounds for seeing an obstruction of justice case. Well, I, I think I'll leave that to the prosecutors. The prima facie case is, is only that, and uh, particularly us non-legal authorities shouldn't, shouldn't conclude anything from it. But uh, it, it clearly has led to uh, what's going to be a prolonged investigation, multiple investigations, at a time when the president would like to be in a position of pushing through what, what at least at the outset of his term, was a very ambitious domestic agenda of infrastructure rebuilding, of tax reform, of deregulation, and of health care reform. Uh, it was ambitious for anybody to begin with to try to accomplish all or most or maybe even some of that in the context of all these investigations is going to be very difficult. Um, would it be fair to say that the appointment of um, Robert Mueller, the former FBI head as special counsel leading these investigations, is bad news for Trump? I've heard the arguments both ways. Some people argue that this, because he's done nothing wrong, this will clear the air quickly. Mueller is widely respected, which he certainly is, has no ulter ulterior agenda or anything like that. I tend to think that that's not the case. I think that the appointment of a special counsel, as for instance, uh, the Wall Street Journal argued, is a bad thing. I've seen these investigations before. They, be, they start going in this direction, and they veer off here, and they veer off there, and they go up, and they go down, and you never know what they're going to end up uh, looking at. The Whitewater investigation aimed at Hillary Clinton in the 1990s ended up in multiple indictments and I believe the governor of, of, uh, of Arkansas went to jail, but Hillary was never touched. So you don't know what the collateral damage of these investigations could be over time. And for that reason, I think it's not a good thing that this is the direction it's taken. Although I think that Mueller is an outstanding person and he certainly can help restore confidence for the American people that this is all being done properly and credibly. But to argue that this is a good thing for the Trump administration, uh, you have to fly in the face of most of what I have seen in my life come out of these investigations. Now, it struck me in my private conversations with many uh, sitting Republicans here on Capitol Hill that um, most of them uh, feel pretty strongly that Trump is screwing up, but for political reasons they can't say this, or not many of them have said this in public. Would that be a fair characterization? They're very concerned about the lack of focus on the domestic agenda, 
and the distractions that we've been discussing that now have made it more difficult to pass that agenda. They are in a very difficult political position. Let's, let's separate out what's the right thing to do, and most of them will do the right thing. Let's just look at the politics of it for a second. It's tempting when you have a midterm election coming, your party controls the White House and the, the president is unpopular, to say, I'm separating myself from the president so that I can get reelected. It almost never works. It's a tempting thing to do, but most members of Congress up here who have been around for a while understand it doesn't work. What happens in a midterm election in America is voter turnout falls way off from the presidential election, and the whole question is who's going to show up to vote? So even if you successfully separate yourself from an unpopular president, all you may end up accomplishing is further depressing the turnout of vote on your side. So the, the, the strategy of separating from the White House is usually a losing political strategy for the party of the White House in any event. For that reason, most of these members of Congress are, are really eager to see the president solve these problems, get control of his administration again, and move back on the domestic agenda. Partly because they want him to succeed, but partly because they don't have any other alternative politically that works for them. Just to indulge in a sort of hypothesis, what would a President Pence be like? Uh, very conservative in both the larger and the smaller sense of that word. Uh, he's a reserved guy. He's, uh, he, he's as not impetuous as Donald Trump appears to be impetuous. Uh, I think that his uh, philosophy is very well defined. I think that President Trump is a populist who does not have a well defined philosophy. I think Vice President Pence would be a very predictable president, maybe too predictable for those on the left, but uh, quite predictable, uh, and a person of unquestioned integrity and honesty and, and a very well regarded by everybody that served with him on Capitol Hill. Final question. Your probability that Trump will um, serve out his full term? I believe the president will serve out his full term. I, I want the president to serve out his full term. I, I was not a Trump supporter. But I want him to succeed. He's, he formed a cabinet that I have high regard for. He's got an agenda that I support, domestically particularly, and he's got some great opportunities to shake the system up, which is what his voters wanted. We just got to get past the distractions that have been created literally since election day and get on with actually doing the kind of change that his voters want. But I think that he'll be able to do it. Wonderful, Ben. Thank you so okay, much for your time. You.